providing financial resources. One of the goals in this phase is to identify and connect with community resources, social services within the healthcare organizations, within the county, the state, and the federal system, to look into job development and rehabilitation if the person is going to return to the workforce. If someone suffers a disability or illness and is unable to return to their job, then their role in life is seriously compromised. This can lead to depression and despair. Offering someone job rehabilitation, perhaps in another field where their abilities can be used to the highest level, is an important phase of rehabilitation. And financial planning is necessary for those people in order to manage their disability throughout their lifetime. Now you are a caregiver in the home. There are certain responsibilities and roles that you have assumed by accepting care for the person that you are looking after. The first function you must fulfill is to evaluate the level of current functioning. This includes the physical capabilities of the individual as well as the psychological capabilities. Psychological capabilities cannot be emphasized enough because without initiative, motivation, and the will to improve other phases of rehabilitation cannot be successful. Next, you need to set goals for rehabilitation. And we have to be careful that these goals are realistic. Remember when you learned a language for the first time? Initially, you learned simple words, words that you needed in order to basically function. It's similar when we go through rehabilitation with someone who has become disabled. We need to look at those functions which are absolutely required for them to live in a fairly normal way on a daily basis. We also need to realize that improvement cannot come immediately, and these goals must be realistic. We must crawl before we can walk, and we must walk before we can run. We want to evaluate progress and adjust our plan of care to achieve our goals. We must be realistic in looking at are the goals realistic for this particular person? What is their optimal level of functioning? Obviously, we cannot restore function which has been lost in earlier times. Next, your role is to determine who is going to be involved in the care. You, as the caregiver, do not need to be the one to take on all of the responsibilities. There may be others in the household or within the community that can assist in the rehabilitative effort. You, though, need to be the leader of the team. You need to assign tasks and roles to those people that are willing to help and are competent to help. Look for outside resources. Remember, in order to maintain higher levels of self-esteem, an individual wants to interact with their environment and with friends and relatives outside the home. Be sure, however, that you observe the interaction with those other individuals. Even though Aunt Bessie may be a wonderful nurse, bossy Aunt Bessie might not be the best person to take care of mom. You, as the primary in-home care provider, can make that determination. And you may need to gently say to Aunt Bessie that although her efforts are very much appreciated, that perhaps her visitation needs to be limited. Also observe interaction with the other caregivers that are perhaps hired from outside the home. These include those people that come in to provide cleaning, cooking, and other care. Be very observant 
as to the interaction between your loved one and the caregiver. If there seems to be hostility or unwillingness, be attuned to that and make changes as necessary 